So today I hope that you will fall in love with these projects. Let's go. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Courtney, it's here. I cannot believe it, I am so excited. It's the big kickoff for the fall DIY season. I have rounded up some of my most favorite fall DIYs for you. I hope that you enjoy these. Now let's get crafting. For this DIY, I grabbed one of these pumpkin garlands from the Dollar Tree Plus section and I started by removing six of the pumpkins from the twine and removing the stems. I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to do two pumpkins, three pumpkins, four pumpkins. I wasn't quite sure of the height, so I just started by hot gluing two of the pumpkins together. After some thinking, I decided to go ahead and just do two of these that were a stack of three pumpkins. So I hot glued one more pumpkin to each of these little pumpkin stacks. I then took two wooden rounds that I had in my stash. You can grab these from Dollar Tree, Hobby Lobby, where have you. And I put some brown wax on them and let them dry really well. Once they were dry, I grabbed my pumpkins and I just hot glued those directly to the wooden rounds. Then it was time to attach my candles. For that, I just grabbed this little pack of votive candles from the Dollar Tree and I simply hot glued those to the top of the pumpkins and then these little candlesticks were ready to be displayed in my fall decor. Now I had one of these little tins from Dollar Tree and some pieces of styrofoam that were cut into wedges and I thought, you know what, I can make a realistic faux piece of pumpkin pie. Now here I've got the oven bake orange Sculpey clay um, that I'm using because I wanted it to keep that sheen, which means this clay is not actually going to really harden up since I'm not baking it in the oven. If you don't really like that idea, then definitely you could use some air dry clay and then just go back in and paint some glossy Mod Podge to kind of get that sheen back. So what I'm doing is just treating this clay kind of like fondant and covering my piece of styrofoam with that clay. I will link everything in today's video down below in the description box. So if you have any questions, check there. But if you don't get your answer that way, just feel free to drop it in the comments. The pie wedge is covered, so now I needed to work on my crust. So again, I'm using that tan Sculpey, it's the oven bake again, clay, and I'm rolling it out. And then I'm just gonna take my pie wedge, set it on there, and kind of piece this together just by folding it around. I'm using my hobby knife to kind of trim the extra pieces. Once I kind of cover the bottom of it and the back side of the pie slice, I just take some more clay to make the little decorative crinkle part and stick that on there. Now it's time to get that little dollop of whipped cream on there. This is my favorite spackling by far. It, in my opinion, is just the best one. You will definitely probably see me using it several times over the next few months. So if you're looking for a good one, definitely check it out. Just kind of squirted that on there with a piping bag and then this was ready to be displayed. This is going to be a multi-seasonal piece, which is one of my favorite type of projects to make. I'm using two of the large canvases from Dollar Tree. You could use any kind of frame, any kind of size here. You just need two of them. I started by breaking down the canvas, removing all of the canvas piece, as well as removing the staples. And you need to decide kind of which way you're going to want this sign to go, whether you want it portrait mode or you want it landscape mode. Once I got it all broken down, I did go in. I don't like how the canvas has these little, I don't know, holes in the corner. So I did go in with some wood filler and fill all of those in and let that dry really well and then gave it a good sanding. Now it's time to grab your spacer. My number one recommendation would be to use a square wooden dowel rod. If you have that, I happen to have this one in my stash. It came from Home Depot, but you could actually use several of just the regular little round dowel rods as well. It will still work, no big deal. I trimmed these down with my miter shears. I'm attaching dowel rods to three of my sides. I want my picture to be in landscape mode so it's a little bit wider. So I'm gonna use wood glue and glue down three dowel rods. Now you might see some staples there kind of on the right hand side and you're thinking, you said you removed all those. Well, I, <laughs> it took a while to remove them and then I realized that on the very top of my picture, I didn't need to remove that because that's where I'm gonna be sliding my board in and out and I'm not putting a dowel rod up there. So I did leave a few staples in my sign. 
Once all the dowel rods were attached on three sides, it was dry. I grabbed my other canvas frame and you want to take the back side of that so it's nice and flat and you're just going to glue that down, kind of make a little canvas sandwich here and get it all secure. Now it's time to decide how you want your frame to look. I did opt to go ahead and stain my frame. You certainly could paint it or you could even leave it natural. Once you figure out what you want your frame to look like, it's time to start making the inserts for your frame. So you wanna measure the opening at the top and you wanna grab foam board from Dollar Tree. That's gonna be the side or the sign, excuse me, that you can slip in and out super easy and just constantly change out the signs with all the seasons. So I decided to use fabric on my foam board just for something different. I wanted to use fabric and some iron on. So I grabbed some fabric from Hobby Lobby, a fall themed, a Christmas themed. I ironed on some little decals that I made on my Cricut. And then this sign, y'all, seriously, you slide it in. When fall's done, you pull that one out, flip it over, slide that in. So you're getting two seasons on one sign and they're easy to store. You can just stack the boards. It doesn't take up much space. This is definitely a space saver if you're limited on space, but love to put out all kinds of different holiday signs. You could make birthday special ones. You could make anniversary. I mean, the options are endless. It's time to make over one of these cute little wooden lanterns from Dollar Tree. So to start, I grabbed my hobby knife and I cut off the X portion, leaving kind of this nice rectangular hole in the front of my little lighted lantern. Then I grabbed some orange paint. Actually, it is the color pumpkin to be specific of um, from Waverly Chalk Paint and I painted the entire lantern orange. From there, I grabbed a sheet of vellum paper and I sized it down so that it would fit as an insert on the front of my lantern. I cut a decal on my Cricut that just says happy fall. I will have this design linked down below for you in the description box. I did opt to mirror mine and put it on the inside of the vellum, but you don't have to do this step. Honestly, I think you'll still get the same look whether you put it on the outside of the vellum or on the inside. The trickiest part of this project was definitely putting the vellum in. I kind of just worked in sections. Tweezers were helpful. I put some hot glue at the base. I know this is kind of hard to see because it was all willy nilly. It was, it was a little bit chaotic. I'm not going to lie. And I just kind of put some glue and then rolled it up and kind of leaned the lantern forward until it caught the glue. But I did get it on there and it looked great. The last step was just to grab a variety of the Dollar Tree florals. They always have such great florals. And I just made a little arrangement on the top of the lantern just to make it a little more festive. And then this cute little lantern was ready to be displayed either in a tear tray or just on the coffee table, wherever you want to put it. This DIY is going to be a fun one. Now it will be simpler if you do have a Cricut, but I've got some ideas for you. You wanna grab some of these beer can glasses and you need to grab color changing vinyl. Now my preference, I like to use Tech Wraps color changing vinyl, um, but you could pick any brand that you want. Now I'm gonna cut a bunch of different leaves using several different colors of vinyl on my Cricut, but if you don't have a Cricut, try using a hand punch or even just grab a leaf stencil, trace some leaves because you're gonna wanna place them around anyway since it's different colors. And once you get them placed on the glass, just make sure that you do wipe the glass with some alcohol before you apply vinyl to it. It's so fun to add the cool liquid and just see the leaves change color. It's a whole fall vibe and I absolutely love how cute this DIY turned out to be. Grab one of these little fence picket signs from Dollar Tree and paint it whatever color you want. I kind of went with this uh, tannish color 
got it all painted and then went in with a little bit of white to give it kind of a distressed look. Once it was all painted, I grabbed some of the pumpkins from Dollar Tree, the little wooden ones, and I covered them with scrapbook paper. All of my scrapbook paper came from Hobby Lobby and I just used a glue stick to get it attached and hot glued those down added a little twine bow to it. And then I had a bunch of these Scrabble letters left over from uh, my mom's celebration of life. So I just spelled out happy fall, glued those down with my glue gun. And then this sign was ready to be used in my fall decor. This is probably one of my most favorite DIYs from last year. And if you watched the last mystery box, this is the project that I gave Whitney the challenge of recreating. And of course she did a phenomenal job on that. So for this, grab yourself one of these glasses from Dollar Tree. I painted the inside with some truffle colored paint by Waverly Chalk Paint, then traced the top of the cup on a piece of Dollar Tree foam board so that I could make a base to put my fake whipped cream on there. Again, I'm using that spackle that I absolutely love in a piping bag and I just went around in a circle and started to pipe that on there. Now, while this was still wet, I did take a little bit of sand and sprinkle that on there to kind of give a whole graham cracker type vibe since it was tan. And then I used some fake sprinkles. You guys know I love to use these. They're made out of polymer clay and I placed them all along the top just using some um, tweezers. Time to work on a little topper. So taking some of these summertime beads from Dollar Tree, I grabbed a couple of those because they were kind of squared off. I basically was making a miniature version. Last spring, I did those dice marshmallows. You might remember those. And so this is kind of a mini version of that. So I put them on a bamboo skewer, put some hot glue on there and just kind of put it at the tip of the bamboo skewer and then took some white paint and pi painted the little wooden blocks with that white paint. I wanted to make a little label for the cup. So I'm just using some of these round Avery stickers that I had. The s'more stickers actually were from Dollar Tree. They were scratch and sniff stickers. So I thought, okay, that's perfect. And then I just used a pen and hand wrote it. You definitely could print something out if you wanted to, but I just wanted to keep it simple. So I made a cute little sticker so that I could put that on my front of my glass. And then on the top of the little marshmallows after they were dry, I just took some brown hot glue and drizzled that all over the tops of them to kind of just add that extra touch. To get my topper attached, I took some of that brown hot glue and just kind of ran it around the top of my glass. You definitely could do some drips down the side if you wanted to, attached that. And then I took my little marshmallow skewer sticks and stuck those in there and decided it definitely needed a graham cracker. So I rolled out some Sculpey clay, poked some little holes in there, stuck that graham cracker right inside of that topper. And then this was ready to go. It's time to make a giant pumpkin. So to do that, you wanna grab three of the large serving trays from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna start by giving these a coat of white paint to just act as a primer and get them nice and covered so that I could take them inside and paint them with some of that pumpkin colored paint by Waverly Chalk Paint. I ended up opting to not do full coverage. As you can see, you can see some of that white primer paint coming through. I just like that look. And now you need some either rulers, sturdy popsicle sticks. I am using wood shims because I have a ton of these left over from when I did a wood shim hack video. I will link that video down below if you want to see all the things you can do with some wood shims. And I grabbed these, but I needed to make them sturdy. So what I'm doing is essentially just gluing two together so that it'll make a nice thick stick. Again, you could use a paint stir stick if you have that. I'm just using what I have on hand. And I ended up with five of these that I had glued two of these together, if that makes sense. Once that was done, I was ready to, on one side, glue down a plate and then put some hot glue on the other side and glue down another plate. So they're kind of side by side. 
Before we la add that last tray, I did flip it over. And again, I glued down some extra support, one on the left side, one on the right, just kind of attaching all of that together, making sure this is gonna be super sturdy. Flipped it over and then glued two more shims in that middle section so that I could glue down that third serving tray in the front, just kind of centered between the two that you've glued down first. For the stem, I grabbed some of the brown craft paper from Dollar Tree. I cut a strip of it and then I just rolled it up until I got it nice and thick and tight. And then again, taking one of my wood shims that I had glued well, I glued two wood shims together to make the thicker stick, like I mentioned before. I took that paper and I just hot glued it and started to wrap it around there until I got it looking like a nice chunky stem. And once that was done, it was just a matter of attaching it. So that was easy. I just flipped it over to the back and simply hot glued it directly to the back of my pumpkin. To finish this piece off, I did grab some brown wax and just add a little bit of some accents here and there just to give it a little bit of dimension. I grabbed some burlap ribbon tied a bow and added that to the top of my pumpkin and then finished it off with some Dollar Tree florals that I just attached with some hot glue. I absolutely love the size of this pumpkin and for less than four dollars like this really is a great piece to add to your fall decor. Let's make a floral arrangement using these pumpkins that Dollar Tree had last year. They kind of give off all the sweater vibes. There were three different designs. Now, originally I thought I was gonna do them ivory, but then I really liked the taupe color better. And I just went in with a, a stencil brush cause I felt like it just kind of let the line show through. And I really did like how it looked better by using the stencil brush. Once I got those all painted with this taupe colored paint, I grabbed a wooden plank from Dollar Tree and started to lay out what my floral design was going to look like. Now I had these candles that are battery operated. I got them at Home Goods, And once I decided where these were gonna go, I did hot glue down my pumpkins and then I did trace around the base of my candle only because I'm gonna start attaching florals and I didn't want to accidentally cover the area where these candles, I wanted the candles to be able to sit nicely on this, nice and flat. So that is why I traced around my candles. Now comes the fun part of this DIY. Now, I'm not gonna lie, sometimes working with florals really stresses me out. I don't know, anybody else feel that way that you just get a little overwhelmed? But this definitely was fun. I just grabbed all the things, leaves and flowers. You could add pumpkins to this. Dollar Tree really does have a great selection of florals. And I just started to hot glue these down, get them attached. And once these were all attached, this floral arrangement was finished and ready to be displayed. This is probably the easiest DIY in the world. I sure do hope Dollar Tree carries these stackable pumpkins. Grab some of these and then grab textured spray paint. I ended up doing about four coats of the textured spray paint. And when it was all finished, these look like stone pumpkins. I mean, it is such an easy, simple DIY to really elevate from plastic kind of, you know, cheesy looking <laughs> pumpkins to a very classy, sophisticated look. You could definitely add some florals to this if you wanna add some pops of color, but I absolutely love the end result. Time to make a fall sign. I started with this wood round that I picked up in a pack from Amazon and grabbed some ivory colored paint and I started painting it with that chalk paint. Once that was all painted, I set it aside to dry and then grabbed a wooden slatted pumpkin that came from Dollar Tree and traced it onto some scrapbook paper that I got from Hobby Lobby. I love to grab the different seasonal scrapbook paper from there. Once I traced that, I did cut out the pieces and then I applied those to my wooden pumpkin. 
I grabbed some brown raffia that came in a pack from Dollar Tree. It also had orange and I used my glue gun to glue that up on the stem just to kind of add some texture to this. Then I grabbed some jute twine rope and I hot glued it around the edge of my wood round. Again, just to add some texture to the sign and just, I don't know, to give it a little dimension by adding that to the wooden round. If you are afraid of fire, don't do this step, but I did burn the little hairs off of that jute twine rope with a lighter. And then I placed my pumpkin down and grabbed some florals and started to hot glue those to my pumpkin. Also grabbed some tumbling tower blocks that I had stained brown a while ago and spelled out the word fall and hot glued those down. Then it was just a matter of attaching my pumpkin to the wood round. Now I did actually go back in with another color of paint and kind of distress the actual wooden round to break up all that cream color you don't have to do that step I didn't show it on camera so sorry about that and I added a hanger and then this sign was ready to be hung up If you've followed me for a while, you know that I love to do the little miniature crafts and usually the fall and Christmas time is when I bust those out. So for this one, you want to grab one of these cute little mason jars with the lids from Dollar Tree. And I started with some brown raffia and I just kind of cut it up into little shreds and place that at the bottom of the mason jar mug. Then taking one of the mini hay bales, I stuck that in there. You could secure it with a little hot glue if you wanted to. Grabbed a pumpkin and I trimmed off the kind of the stem because it was over really long and these pumpkins were from Dollar Tree as well and I took a brown marker colored the stem so it'd be a little more realistic added a little hot glue and glued that to the top of the hay bale from there I made a cute little sign just using some of the little skewers that these pumpkins were on added a piece of paper that said pumpkins for sale and stuck that inside now on the top of the glass, I did take a little bit of jute rope that I had to wrap across. And the beauty of this is you can grab one of the votive battery operated candles from Dollar Tree and stick it in there. And the lid of this will sit on top nicely and cover it. And now you've made this kind of lit up little tiny pumpkin scene. I mean, you could do a Christmas version. You could do so many little versions of just this little mini kind of snow glow globy type I don't know what you want to call it, but I mean, come on, who doesn't like miniature crafts? Here's an easy Dollar Tree DIY. Grab one of their wooden plank squares and sketch out a pumpkin. I am not an artist by any means, but I do try. So once I got my pumpkin sketched out, I grabbed some brown wax and just painted that around my pumpkin so that I could go back in and paint my pumpkin orange. From there, to add some definition and just, I guess, a little texture to this, I grabbed some twine and hot glue and I used that to outline the pumpkin, kind of add the little ridges and details to it. Once that was done, you certainly could go in and add some florals to this. You could add words to it, or you could just keep it simple simple and plain and set it up where you like. Now's the time to hit up the clearance section at Hobby Lobby and grab those cutting boards. I love to stock up on these when they are in sale because this is an easy DIY for your home, for a hostess gift, make a stencil, and then you guys know I love torch paste. I prefer this to the scorch markers. It works so well. You simply apply it to whatever piece you want to wood burn, leave it for three minutes, and then you have to use a high heat heat gun. You can't use one of the smaller crafting heat guns. I definitely will have the one that I use linked down below in the description box, but you would burn it and it turns out so well. Like I just absolutely love making this DIY. It's quick, it's easy, and again, perfect for home decor or those personalized hostess gifts.
Here's an easy way to make a decorative pillow without a Cricut. Grab one of the tote bags from Dollar Tree. Here I've got my image pressed, but this is what I did. I used iron-on transfer paper. I will link my favorite one down below. And all you have to do is print out your design and heat press it on there. I'm using my auto heat press, but you can use an iron. It works just as well. Press your image down and voila, you can make all these really easy, customized decorative pillows without a bunch of fancy machinery. Once the pump, the pillow's done, stuff it. And then I'm just using fabric hot glue to close mine up. It's from Surebonder. You guys know that I love Surebonder and their products. I do not like to sew. I It's not pretty when I bust out my sewing machine. So this is just a quick and easy option. And for this one, once I got it all closed up, I decided to need a little something extra. So I took some Dollar Tree nautical rope and I just did that around the edge. It definitely added that little extra touch that the pillow needed. Now this DIY is a little off the charts. If you follow the mystery box challenge, uh, this was one of the items that was sent to me in a fall themed project. So I thought, you know what, let's show it. So if for some reason you have some paper plates laying around, you're gonna need three plates. The first thing you wanna do is trim out the center of all three plates, okay? Then taking two of the plates, you want to make them kind of like a C, okay? Once you get those, I can't believe I'm even describing this, but I was pretty proud of coming up with this out of paper plates. So once you have your two Cs, that third one you're going to leave whole, just glue it back together. That becomes the center portion of your pumpkin. And then you glue all three of those pieces together. To finish this off, I painted the pumpkin and then took some scrapbook paper and used that to fill in the insides of the pumpkin. The scrapbook paper, again, was from Hobby Lobby. Now it's just time to add some embellishments. So of course you can add your burlap ribbons, you can add your florals. I had a welcome sign that was from Dollar Tree. I added that, add a little hanger, and there you go. Who knew that using cheap old Dollar Tree paper plates could turn into a little pumpkin. Let's make a pumpkin DIY using some of these leftover Valentine's tags. I started by taking some pumpkins that three different sizes from Dollar Tree and I cut them in half with my hobby knife. From there, I went on and just did a search about pumpkin like definition and found a page online, printed it out, and it just says all things pumpkin. I traced it on my tag, cut it down and used a glue stick to attach that to my tag. I then grabbed my pumpkins and painted them three different colors. I did an orange, a kind of off-white color, and a yellow to kind of give the whole candy corn vibe. And then it was time to assemble my little pumpkin scene on the tack. I started by gluing down some moss on the bottom of my tag and then gluing down the large pumpkin. I did do some layers of moss in between each pumpkin and then grabbed some more of those awesome Dollar Tree florals, added a little bit of that and some burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree. I cut it down, tied a little bow, hot glued that on there. And then this was ready to be displayed. You could do a little hanger on it if you wanted to hang this like on a doorknob or put it on a tiered tray. Lots of different options for this little sign. To get this project going, grab two of these wooden pieces and you could leave them natural, you could stain them, or you could paint them. I opted to stain them with that good old brown wax that I tend to use a lot during the fall DIY season. Once I got those stained, I grabbed a piece of canvas. This came out of one of the Dollar Tree uh, canvases that I broke down and I wanted to size it down. So I just used those wooden pieces as a guide and kind of measured what I wanted my little banner sign to look like. And I cut down that piece of canvas. 
The next step for this sign was to grab one of these wooden leaves from Dollar Tree. I used a little wood filler to fill in the holes. And then I don't know what came over me, but I kind of reverted back to my kindergarten painting days where I wanted a watercolor effect. So I took some red paint, added a little water, took some yellow paint, added a little water because I knew that when the red and the yellow mixed together, it would get orange. And then I don't know this technique. It's called use two hands and act like you're in kindergarten painting technique. So that's what I did here until I liked how it looked. Once it was done, I was ready to start assembling my sign. So I glued with some hot glue down the wooden pieces that I stained, glued my leaf down and then added a raffia bow and a hanger to the sign. And then this little beauty was all finished. a unique way to use the styrofoam pumpkin. So grab some hammered copper colored spray paint and spray a Dollar Tree pumpkin with that. Also grab the brown colored hammered spray paint. You need one of the pizza pans from Dollar Tree and then some kind of bowl. I had that wooden bowl from a thrift store find, but you could get a glass bowl from Dollar Tree and make this as well. Once you get the pumpkin nice and spray painted, again, spray your tray and your little bowl base, then it's time to assemble. Use some strong glue, not hot glue. We wanna use E6000, Gorilla Grip Glue, whatever your strong glue of choice. And you wanna start by gluing your pumpkin to your bowl. Then you wanna make sure when you're gluing the pumpkin that the flat part of the pumpkin is up because that way you'll have a better um, surface area for that pizza tray to attach. Then put some glue on the top of the pumpkin, put the tray down, and now you've got yourself a really unique fall display tray. grabbed this frame from Dollar Tree and started by removing the white metal little plaque from the front and flipped it over. On the back, I added some scrapbook paper that came from Hobby Lobby, just used a glue stick to get that attached and then reattached the white portion of the frame. I created, because I love peanuts, a great pumpkin printable and trimmed that down and slid that in to the white frame. And then to finish it off, I just grabbed a variety of these little Dollar Tree pumpkins and glued those down along with some of the mini hay bales, just just to make a whole little scene. You could add some little fairy lights to this. It's just a cute little sign. And I mean, come on, who doesn't love peanuts? to make a unique garland using some of these faux leather leaves from Dollar Tree. So I started by tracing the leaf on a piece of paper, took it to my printer and I downsized it about 25% and then I cut that out to use it as a template to trace some leaves on some book page scrapbook paper that I had in my stash from Hobby Lobby. So once I got all of the book page leaves traced and cut out, I took a little bit of hot glue and I glued those to my leaves. Using these clothespins that I found on Amazon, I decided to attach my leaves to these. So first I needed to trim off the stems of the leaves. Then taking some hot glue, I ran it down the back of the leaf and attached a clothespin to each one of my leaves. The final step was to get this attached to some twine. So I simply just took the twine, spaced out the leaves and tied it up around the top portion of the clothespin. And then this garland was ready to be hung up. Grab one of these picture shadow box piggy banks. And for this, I scraped off the letters. I know some of y'all are like, why do you do that? I don't know why. I just find this the easiest way to get the letters off. I never really have good luck 
using nail polish remover or any other type of way. Once the letters were off, I popped off the back and I traced it onto a piece of plain white cardstock and attached it with a glue stick. And then it was time to grab my glass and start attaching leaves. So these are just some leaves from Dollar Tree. The key here is to tack down the leaves along the edge of the glass and then all of the leaves in the center of the glass, tack it leaf to leaf. That way you're not ending up with blobs of glue on your glass because you don't want those blobs of glue to show up. Once the leaves were all down, I grabbed some fairy lights and I used scotch tape to tape them to the backing of this frame, popped it in there, and then this was finished. I absolutely love the fall glow that this little light gives. grab some cookie cutters and let's make some fake cookies. You guys probably remember my little Christmas cookies that I made. Those were so fun to do. So for this one, you need cookie cutters and you're gonna need some oven bake Sculpey clay. I'm using some orange and some tan. You wanna roll it out, use those cookie cutters to cut your shapes and then just follow the directions as far as baking it. While the cookies are baking, I grabbed a white clear plate from Dollar Tree, thought this might be a fun way to kind of display the cookies and I added some scrapbook paper to the bottom of the plate with some Mod Podge. Now it's time to decorate the cookies. And of course, I'm using the colored glue sticks from Surebonder to get that done. I absolutely love using these. They give all the fake icing vibes that you need and it just works out really well. So you can add these. Now, I often get asked all the time about, okay, when you're using the colored glue sticks, how do you not waste it? So here's the quick little 101 on that. I often cut my glue sticks in half and I will do it that way. Anytime I'm changing colors, I will squirt them out into silicone molds. You can remelt that down if you have a floral pot. That's one way you could make some thumbtacks. You could squirt it into molds and paint it. So there's a lot of ways to where you're not wasting that extra glue when you're changing colors. Once the cookies were decorated, I just added them into a little Dollar Tree dish and that's it. These were ready to be displayed. to make a sign using one of these chalkboards that you can find in the teaching section of Dollar Tree. I started off by typing up a little phrase in Cricut Design Space and I did print it out or cut it out, I should say, on my Cricut. And when I went to apply this, uh, a little happy accident started happening here. When I was starting to pull the transfer tape back, it actually started distressing the chalkboard. And so at first I was like, oh, I will have to paint over that. But then I kind of liked the look. So I ended up taking more of that transfer tape and just kind of, you know, smacking it around on the chalkboard to get a whole distressed vibe. The only other thing I wanted to do to this was add just a little bit of color. So to get that, I grabbed some of these wooden leaves that I got in a pack from Hobby Lobby and I hot glued them down with some hot glue and then that was it. I left it super simple, but I love the little pop of color that those leaves give this sign. over this pumpkin sign I started by actually cutting off the little pumpkin part just using my hobby knife just had to score it a couple times I was able to snap it off then on one end I took some burlap ribbon that I had in my stash it comes from Hobby Lobby they have it every fall and Christmas season I hot glued that down along with a little bit of buffalo check ribbon in the middle to kind of break up the burlap from there I took some of the burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree that has a little lace trim and I 
just pieced together a bow and ended up hot gluing that down on that little burlap buffalo check little section there. The thankful is just one of the metal words from Dollar Tree. Left that as is, also glued that down. And then I wanted to add a little something extra, so I couldn't decide between the orange or the white pumpkin. Ended up going with the white pumpkin, hot glued that to the middle of the bow, and then this sign is finished. Here is a fun little accent piece that you can make. You'll want to start by grabbing some pipe cleaners, preferably yellow ones, and some of the golden beads from Dollar Tree. You're going to need four pipe cleaners and 30 beads for each pipe cleaner. So what I did is I strung up 15 beads and then kind of folded the pipe cleaner in half and then strung up 15 on the other side. Then you wanna take all four of your pipe cleaners and just kind of interlock them together and then push the beads down and twist off the top. With the top all secure, I grabbed some maize colored paint from Whaley Chalk Paint and brushed that all over the beads. I wasn't too worried if the gold was showing through because I thought it kind of added a little something extra to it. Then I grabbed some raffia and just made a little stock using some hot glue to glue that to the top of my corn cob. And then this piece was ready to go. It is the perfect size and the perfect little accent piece just to add something a little extra to your fall displays. Time for a fall themed wreath. You wanna grab one of these raffia wreaths. It's $3 in the Dollar Tree Plus section, but if you can't find this wreath, you certainly could grab a wreath form or one of their green foam wreaths, wrap it with raffia. You know, you could definitely kind of get your own wreath base going. Once I got this unwrapped, I grabbed a dowel rod that I had, kind of a thicker one, trimmed it down so that the dowel rod, basically that piece would fit in the center of my wreath form or the wreath and some nautical rope. You want to wrap that dowel rod to make it look like a tree trunk. So I ended up just using about three pieces of rope and kind of wrapping around and got it the thickness that I liked. The key here was that on the bottom of it, I had pieces of rope kind of dangling off past the dowel rod on the bottom as well as the top. And that's because those bottom pieces, you're gonna kind of sort out, spread out, tack down with some hot glue to be the roots of the tree. And the top pieces that are dangling, you wanna unbraid those and kind of spread them out to make the branches of the tree. Here's what the wreath is looking like once you got your branches all tacked down and the roots. I ended up taking some fake leaves and I just started to hot glue those down on the top. Then for the bottom, I did go in with a little bit of Dollar Tree moss and just kind of tucked that in here and there, added a few leaves on the bottom. And then I left it like this. I didn't add any words to it. You certainly could add a little sign to the tree trunk if you wanted to, but I absolutely love all the colors of this wreath. grab some sponges for this next DIY. I started with the yellow pieces because those were the ones that I felt like would do a better job because I did want to paint them. I cut them into little squares and then I just used kind of a lightish caramelly tannish color and got them coated with the paint. Then you want one of these little cookie pie pan thingamabobbers from Dollar Tree and that's going to be our pie pan. I grabbed a piece of tan fabric that I had in my stash and I cut a circle kind of leaving I don't know about two ish inches two to three inches um, kind of uh, allowance around the outside of the pan then I took that fabric and I stuck it in the pan I did hot glue tack it down and when it came to all the sides that were sticking up I started to kind of curl it down and tack it down to make it look like a crust inside of the pan so it was just kind of willy-nilly tacking with glue here and there getting the look that I wanted it to look like and in case you're wondering, this is what a fabric pie crust looks like. I think it turned out pretty good. So from there, you want to grab your little pieces of sponge. These are our little apple pieces. Now you certainly could do, you know, 
beads in here, wooden beads and make like a cherry cobbler pie. Like you could do a lot of different little fake fruit pies. Once those were all in there, it was time to work on the lattice pieces. So I took that same tan fabric and just cut thin strips about a half an inch and began to do the whole weave thing until I got enough pieces. And then I tacked those down with some hot glue. Once the lattice pieces were on there, I took some Mod Podge and a little bit of tan sand from Dollar Tree and sprinkled that on top of those pieces of fabric. It kind of gave off the whole crystallized sugar vibe and I just kind of liked the look that it gave. The last thing I did was just quickly grab a tag and I wrote apple pie on there, $5, added some raffia to it and that was it. This cute little fake pie was ready to be displayed. Here's a fun way to make over one of these photo frames that you can find in the Dollar Tree Plus section. So I started with some fall themed scrapbook paper and I traced just kind of the actual box portion onto the scrapbook paper, cut that paper out and applied it to the I guess base of this little frame box. From there I did tape off around the frame on top and I painted that with this nice kind of sage green color. And while that paint was drying, I created a printable that says I am grateful for, and I cut that out and put it in the picture portion of this little box. I also created some little tags. And the idea behind this is every day to write down something that I'm grateful for, drop it in the box. And then at the end of the month, you can go through and read. Other people could drop things in there. You could do it as a family activity. So just kind of a box just to make you really appreciate this time of year. If you've got pumpkin patch pictures, this is a great DIY for you. This is my oldest daughter, Andy, when she was little. I absolutely love this picture. I picked up a frame from Dollar Tree. I've got some scrapbook paper that I'm sizing down. I'm gonna attach my picture to the scrapbook paper and kind of clip that in the frame. To finish off the frame, super simple. Just add a little bit of greenery, maybe a little pumpkin. And then of course a raffia bow always sends all the fall vibes. And then there you go. You've got yourself a cute way to display all of those fun pumpkin patch pictures that you might have. Still craving some more fall Dollar Tree DIYs? Well, I've dug up some of my favorites from way in the past. I will have the video that all of these are in linked down below in the description box in case you want to make any of these.
And that wraps up the first official fall video of 2023. Let me know down below which one of these projects was your favorite or let me know if you have created any of these. I would love to know when are you gonna decorate for fall and what types of fall projects would you like to see? Would you like to see garlands or signs or I don't know, hostess gifts? Let me know down below in the comments so that I might be able to work some of those into all of my future DIYs. Thanks so much for watching guys. I really do appreciate it. Here are some more videos you might enjoy and I will see you in the next one. Bye.